Hello everyone, in this video I will present to you another fake captcha. I know I've made like 5 videos on this topic in the past week, but I'm sorry, I really like fake captchas. The views on these videos are absolutely horrible and you guys seem to be bored by them. But hear me out, I have a visionary mindset. Fake captchas will cease to exist very soon. Right now is a unique once in a lifetime opportunity for us to gather up together, enjoy the absolute abundance of fake captures and document all of them before they're gone. Mark my words, many years down the line you will be nostalgic about this exact type of malware, but where are you going to turn to once all of this beautiful stuff is gone? This is how I think. I truly believe way back in the day people were super annoyed and bored by the fake anti-malware. It was out there in every corner of the internet. But look at you now, who's yearning for a new fake anti-malware family to drop? This is how malware always has been, it's just another page of the book. This will be the last fake captcha video I ever make. I promise. But I want you to visit this video 5 years from now in 2030 and tell me if I was right. It is the most clever and crafty malware out there so far. The evolution from fake anti-malware to pops, to browser notification scams, to now fake captures, it's honestly beautiful to witness. So if you're watching in 2030 and beyond, please tell me in the comments if I made the right call to preserve all these captures, which are right now considered boring and mainstream. Of course if I'm still out there alive and well. But anyways, the final captcha I want to cover is the fake Google one, which fetches your IP address looks exactly like the original and adapts to the platform. In the background, I have an anti-detect dashboard running. It's a tool to create instances of browsers with fake fingerprints. Using that tool, I'll show you how the site adapts its malicious shellcode to infect the recipient. So I'm gonna create Windows, Linux and Mac OS browsers. So let's go ahead and start real quick. So you can select the OS and you can completely modify your browser fingerprint and how it detects your hardware. This dashboard contains plenty of upsells, but you know, it's quite obvious because anti-detect dashboards are frequently and actually mostly used for botting. So here is our Windows 11 browser. Um, you can change everything so the websites don't detect us, but that's pretty much enough for the fake captcha. These tools are usually used for circumventing Facebook detection or Google detection, all that kind of stuff. We'll get Linux, select Linux, create profile, and we get a warning because uh, you can't really emulate an operating system because uh, there are too many variables they have to account for. So we create that anyway. Uh, we have a Linux browser right here. Uh, and finally, let's create a Mac OS browser, there's Mac OS. All right, beautiful. We have three browsers and we can start them concurrently. Let's go ahead and do that. There we go. So look at that, it's basically Google Chrome, except it's running on different platforms. It's emulating different platforms. So here is the thing, we're gonna enter the fake captcha website on these three browsers and see what happens. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go. We have macOS on the left, Linux in the center and Windows on the right. So let's go ahead and run that captcha at the same time on every browser. We're gonna paste the URL in every address bar, hit enter. And there we go, we have three captchas running in different browsers on different platforms. I'm gonna zoom in real quick. So this is how this page looks. Uh, this network is blocked due to unaddressed abuse complaints about malicious behavior. This page checks to see if it's really a human sending the requests and not a robot coming from this network. It exposes your IP address. So that's interesting. I've never seen that before in a fake captcha and got a timestamp, which is valid and actual, except in, it's in UTC. 
Then the URL we're supposedly trying to access, which I can probably access from macOS. It doesn't exist, sure. Oh wait, that's the whole URL. Oh, it doesn't exist anyway. It doesn't really matter. As long as you press on the CAPTCHA, you get shellcode to execute. So um, let me just bring up the notepad real quick. We're gonna paste every command we get into here. So let's start from Mac OS. Verification failed. Oh, who would have known? Please follow the instructions below. Press command plus space to open spotlight. Type terminal and press return. Copy the command below. So they give you an option to copy that, but you can also press the button, which is uh, obviously the easiest way and what most people will do. So they're asking you to open terminal on Mac OS. And let's see what the command is. And the command is quite obviously not G drive verify. It's actually a base 64 command. They're echoing into your terminal and piping into bash. So let's decode that. This is the equivalent in normal encoding. curl-s, aka download, download this file right here, roberto6135, nohub bash, and uh, that's how it starts. So you're actually downloading an executable onto your Mac and running it. Obviously, that's how it works every single time, except it's different for every platform. That's what it shows us for Mac OS. Let's hop onto Linux and see what happens. I'm not a robot. Please verify me. Verification failed. What a shame, G drive verify. Copy command. What does it give us now? Whoa. That is interesting. IWR. I'm not sure there is such a command on Linux. Uh, there is a comment, security validation pending, ref ID, reference ID, something. That's a comment. We can ignore that. Is there an IWR command on Linux? Editor, aka me, please edit that in. And it basically, that, that means invoke web request. Uh, it downloads something from wetnova.best. That's the Linux side of things. Let's see what Windows has to offer. Press the Windows key plus X. That is new. So Windows plus X gives you a little power menu right here on the bottom left. And press I to open terminal. And that is true. You can see the I being underlined, that means if we press I, it's opening the terminal. Press Control V and press Enter to verify, which we're not going to do. Um, let's see what the command is. That is the command for Windows. So the idea is basically the same. They give us uh, a little comment at the end, so we don't feel suspicious. And then we get invoke web request, wetnova.best, collapse.png, and then pipes it to IEX, which is important for PowerShell, because if you invoke the web request, it's not enough. You have to execute that as well. So that's what the IEX command does. It executes the stuff you download. wetnova.best, collapse.png. Obviously, that's an executable file. So... Let's see what wetnova.best has to offer. We're gonna run wetnova.best on the Linux browser. wetnova.best. Now, object not found. It's probably been removed already. Unless we can try that with curl. So, um, we're gonna open this in uh, Notepad++ now. Yeah, this is an empty file. Cool. 
So that's uh, unfortunate. We don't get to see what it has to offer. But let's see what Collapse PNG has in store for us. We're going to run this on the Windows browser. It doesn't really matter, but we're trying to stay authentic. Collapse.png. And yeah, that's a damaged file. Why is it damaged? Because it's actually not a PNG file. It's an executable file. It's a PowerShell script. If we download this PNG file and rename it to TXT, we can actually see what it does. So let's do that real quick. This is the collapse.png inside. It's an obfuscated script uh, with a couple functions. It, it seems to be juicy. It seems to be really juicy inside. I can't really read that so far, but I can see... Is this a ransomware? AES managed cipher mode cryptography, what? How much you want to bet it's a ransomware? It's definitely hard to tell what's going on here because everything is so obfuscated, but I can see the imports. The imports actually have to be readable. Show window, get console window. What's up with cryptography though? Base64 string. Oh, you can translate the strings at least. That also means nothing. This must be executable code. I think they just obfuscated it. And they're then concatenating everything together. I have a feeling. Yeah, it's... Uh, what they're decoding here is basically a binary file that it's then compiling into an exe. Well, not really compiling, but you know what I mean. It's concatenating that string and then adding everything together to make an executable file. So the executable file is in here because, and the length of it is two megabytes, at least in base 64. And the ratio of base 64 is I think uh, four thirds or something like that. This is what you're running being on Mac OS being piped to bash Let's see what this is roberto 6135 yeah i don't think we're gonna see anything coming from that ip address anytime soon so apparently that does not work but the idea still stands there is a captcha for every platform and you can't get away from it you will get scammed even if you're on mac os even if you're on linux there is a separate command for every platform that will get you baited. So there it is. Thank you for watching. This is the last video on fake captchas that I will make. And be careful out there. Never fall victim to this type of scam and take care.